A war game is a campaign or course of action involving the strategies of a military exercise. Given this rather broad definition, the first war game documented is believed to be Wei Qi, which is now entitled Go. The point of the game is to reduce the maneuverability of the opponent by encircling his pieces. Each piece and each intersection inherently are the same. Due to this, the only factor in Go is how the pieces are placed with respect to each other. Despite this extreme abstraction, this game accurately teaches methods enumerated in Sun Tzu's Art of War. The next major development in wargaming came with the invention of Chaturanga, an ancestor of chess, in which each piece has very specific properties based on its type. Like Go, it was also about controlling the board and limiting the opponent's moves. On the other hand, there was also an overarching goal, in this case checkmate. With this, players could rank their pieces by their importance in their strategies. This is a very simple winning strategy for chess, and usually only works if you're against an extremely idiotic opponent. First you move the pawn out so that your queen and bishop are free to move. Again, we're assuming a very idiotic opponent, so we'll, he'll move the pawn in front of his rook out. Then, you move the bishop out so that it is in line with this pawn right here. And again, we'll assume a very stupid opponent, and the opponent will move this pawn out. Now you move the queen out. The queen should also be in line with the same pawn. And then, again, we're assuming an idiotic opponent, so we'll say he moves that one out. And finally, you move the queen into position, and that is a very simple way to get checkmate. Modern war games came around with Kriegspiels, invented by George Heinrich Rudolf Johann von Reiswitz. This was the first of a long line of extremely detailed war games. Kriegspiels grew in popularity because in 1824 General von Muffling, then chief of the Prussian general staff, made sure that every regiment of the Prussian army had their own set. Modern war games are generally zero-sum games, in which a situation that benefits one side hinders the other side, and vice versa. Modern war games have various amounts of detail depending on style of gameplay. This can range from descriptions like in Jane's Fighting Ships, which enumerates each weapon on the ship, where it is, how thick the armor is, what type of propulsion it uses, and how much coal it can carry. On the other side, you have war games like Brick Wars, which is centered around the player building his own units in whatever shape he can. The most well-known child of the war game is the role-playing game. The most dramatic difference at first was the scale. In war games, you control entire armies, whereas in role-playing games you control a single character, or small group of characters. At first these characters were predetermined, and there was even less customization than in Jane's fighting ships. But after the release of Advanced Dungeons & Dragons, character customization skyrocketed. Surprisingly, war games play a large role in our cultural media. Its influences range from webcomics such as Earthworld, set in a fantasy war game, to musicals such as chess comparing east-west relations of the Cold War to chess, to movies such as War Games in which a teen accidentally almost starts World War III when he tries to play a game over the internet. The tactical aspect of the war game also shows up in other forms of games such as the popular first-person shooter. Depending on the desired realism in rules, figures, and terrain, starting out playing a war game can cost upwards of $30. Fortunately for those who want to try out wargaming without making such a sizable investment, there are free rule sets online, such as the aforementioned Brick Wars, that allow the use of everyday objects as figurines and terrain. 